guys. So today we're going to look at and research what the Flipper Zero is all about. As you've probably even seen on Instagram and TikTok, it's been a worldwide sensation taking shops and schools by storm. So the Flipper Zero is a multi-tool device for hackers, essentially a Swiss army knife that leverages on open source multi-tool protocols for researching pen test radio protocols, access control systems, hardware, and much more. Flipper Zero is a portable multi-tool system slash hardware application that leverages a lot on open source. So if you love to explore the digital world and the world around you, especially that of radio protocols, access control systems and hardware, this is definitely your gadget. So the main premise behind the Flipper Zero is to com combine all the research and pen testing hardware tools that you would traditionally find, but encase it into a single unit. What I do love about the Flipper Zero is that it's open source and highly customizable. Now there's going to be a whole modding community on the back of this. I could see it in the next five to six years at least. There's going to be different types of modules, different types of screens and skins, and it's going to be really modded community, which I love to see. Originally started as a kickstart project by Pablo Z, it really took the internet by storm, uh, especially with its ease of use, I would say. What I like about it is that it's got that Tamagotchi vibe from the 90s, but at the same time packing a lot of hardware. For me, it's highly versatile as well as having a slick and simple look. So let's break down a quick overview of what it's packing. First of all, it's open source firmware. You can code it and use your own plugins. U2F security token, use a second factor auth to unlock it if you require. RFID card reader and emulator, you can store all your office cards and keys inside it if need be. The I button reader and emulator stores all the Dallas keys that you require. NFC, if anyone's familiar, can swipe and emulate credit cards for near field contact. Micro SD card for if you want to expand storage for a whopping 128 GB. It uses a sub 1 gigahertz transceiver so it can uh, emulate and receive radio signals. It's got a bad USB so you can write your own payloads just like you would do in a rubber ducky. The GPO IO extends with multiple modules, especially that of wireless and expansion boards. The IR transceiver is universal IR remote control if needed. It has a Bluetooth LE that connects to mobile apps and other sorts of apps around the house. It's also got a password combo, secures advice for Sub-Zero type style of security. Leveraging on the hardware personality aspects, like I mentioned, it's got that Tabagotchi vibe in it. So the Flipper Zero is a cyber dolphin who really loves to hack, especially as you're growing with it. What I do like about it is that it keeps kind of its own behavior and mannerisms as you hack. It evolves and grows, which is kind of gives you that Pokemon kind of evolution vibe that you're actually getting somewhere with what you're doing. However, Unlike all the other DIY boards for hackers, it's designed with convenience in mind. Flipper has a robust case, so it's handy in case you keep dropping it or it falls down unsuspectedly. Flipper turns pen testing into a game, which is kind of that achievement goal, which everyone likes. And I really can see a lot of younger kids getting into this quite quickly. Next feature I like is the upgrade my buddy feature. So as you start from level one on Flipper Zero, you've got the Nano to level two, which is the mature. And then you have Cyber Dolphin, which is level three. I'm sure the open source community are going to keep evolving this so it looks like some sort of Gyarados. In this sense, if you start getting lazy or you're not doing enough hacking, the Flipper will let you know about it and it will piss him the right off. The Cyber Dolphin will not stop unless it's pleased that you're hacking again and you're fulfilling certain challenges it has within its systems. Despite this rough character, the Flipper's main goal in life is for you to have fun with it and to be a loyal partner with you as you hack. Technical specification, now we get into the nitty gritty of it, is... Flipper Zero is completely autonomous right off the bat. It has its own beefy battery, which is modular, of course. A handy five position directional pad and display. Uh, and I'm assuming the colors will change as this kind of grows. The main function of the script are available in the Flipper menu. No computer or smartphones required. So in that sense, you can just go straight in. 
For more uh, linear control, the flipper is equipped with a USB type C port for upgrading the firmware, deploying virtual serial ports and emulating the HID input devices. It has an old school kind of LCD screen, nothing too fancy, which kind of makes it perfect visibility in sunlight. It has an ultra low 400 nano amp power consumption so the backlight can be turned off if you don't require it. This allows for a flipper zero to always be ready with at least seven days worth of battery life on the full charge. Sub one gigahertz radio. So we get into that sub zero category. To communicate with the real world, Flipper Zero is built in with a radio module based on the TICC1101 chip. It supports both transmitting and receiving digital signals within the 300 to 928 megahertz frequency range. So you have a, a quite a breadth of space of device range. Like I mentioned, this operates in a wide range class of devices for access control systems, such as garage doors, TV remotes, internet thing sensors and remote keyless systems so let's talk about what you can do straight out of the box with this thing out of the box flipper zero can emulate remotes for popular garage doors and barriers you can keep hundreds if not a couple of hundreds of remotes in the flipper memory as well as create a blank remote for new wireless gates if required simply select a new band uh, within the menu, register your new key and give it a unique name and then you can navigate it to that. It's that simple. The next big thing I like about this is the customization for the radio platform. Like I mentioned, the CC1101 is a well-known universal transceiving frequency for low-powered wireless applications. However, when you're ready and you're using open source libraries, developers can interact with radio subsystems without any limitations you can write any wireless application essentially like custom protocols or decoders that you find in the open source community as well as finding new connections for internet or things devices that you can find around the house so there is no limit to this and how far it can go the next big thing for me is the signal analyzer so for those of you familiar with the old school uh, hack 5 portable pack h1 and its firmware kit I love the Hack RF. Uh, it's a, a very good toolkit that I've used in the past. Very powerful. I think this is a nice evolution to that kind of subset of hardware. So the Flipper Zero can be integrated to decode for portable remote control algorithms such as Keylog and others. So you can analyze an unknown radio system to figure out the protocol under the hood. Um, this goes for any kind of loopback attack you can do on, say, opening car doors, hint, hint. Furthermore, Flipper can record uh, and sample radio signals to analyze it. And later, with more sophisticated tools within the computer systems, you can do replay as well as save any samples or templates. Many remotes of internet or thing devices, such as doorbell sensors, radio sockets, don't use any encryption at all, which in this day and age is quite scary in that case flipper can simply just do a replay attack uh, and the device won't even recognize it isn't from the origin signal next we have the rfid the 125 kilohertz frequency so low frequency proximity cards are wide range obviously these need to be near field or near proximity to be used it's pretty dumb, it keeps only a short few bytes of ID and has no authentication mechanisms within them, allowing it to be easily read cloned and emulated at that frequency. The 125 kHz antenna is located on the button, just underneath the flipper's body. It can read uh, the EM4100 and the HID prox cards, it can save them to memory and emulate them to will, which is absolutely amazing especially if you live in a block of flats and you need to unlock your front door next we have the i button contact key flipper zero has a built-in one wire pad to read i buttons which comes under the protocol that ds1990a key type also known as touch memory or dallas keys in industry this technology is quite old but it's still used around the world it's based on the one wire tap protocol and doesn't have any authentication again, similar to the RFID we saw before. 
The flipper can easily read these keys, save IDs into memory, write IDs into blank keys and emulate any kill at will, similar to what we saw before. Next we have the UTF security token. So Flipper can act as a fully functional UTF key that works with any UTF enabled security device uh, like we see in Google, Twitter, Dropbox, LastPass, etc. Universal second factor UTF protocol is open standard in hardware security tokens used for a second means of authentication. Developers from Google uh, as such use UTF and it acts as a universal key as it's designed to add another layer of authentication on top of what's already a login password auth method. Even if your password gets compromised, an attacker will not be able to log in to your account. This method is much stronger than the usual SMS two-factor, like we saw in my other video with Uber's hack with the 2FA fatigue. Doesn't involve any third parties like cell phones or operators to actually function, so it can work on that front. Next, we have the classical infrared transceiver. The infrared transceiver slash transmitter can send any signals to control electronics such as TV, air conditioners, stereos, etc. etc. Flipper contains an inbuilt library, plethora, full of these kind of attack protocols for all of these. If you want to just terrorize your dad or your mom to turn off the TV in the background or within schools, it can be done. The library is constantly updated by the Flipper community that uses it to upload new signals for IR remote database, so have at you. For me, the most powerful part of Flipper is the open source community. You'll be able to find it on GitHub, which even just saying that should open the floodgates to a whole heap of developers. This means anyone can extend the Flipper Zero functionality by modding the code and writing your own plugins. So sky's the limit right here. All the built-in hardware can be used in your program, such as built-in display, print to text, draw images, navigate buttons, etc. So if you're heavy in modding, this is definitely for you. Like I mentioned before, the Flipper Zero is a very versatile tool in terms of hardware hacking tool. It has 12 built-in GPIO pins, which are 5e tolerant, allow you to connect it to any piece of hardware while running your own code, controlling it with buttons and printable debug messages to the LCD screen. So this is definitely for my hardcore modders. The serial is a USB, has SPI, UART, a 12C. And like I mentioned, it has 12 GPIO pins, 3V logic level, uh, 5 input tolerance levels. Now, like I previously hinted to before, it's so versatile, it can even be used as a bad USB, also known as a rubber ducky as an industry standard. All computers completely trust connected input devices unless you're running some GPOs or Intune kind of policies. Flipper Zero can emulate USB slave devices, allowing it to be recognized by the computer as a regular input device, such as a HID keyboard, Ethernet adapter, etc. etc. You can write your own to keyboard payloads. You could type key sequence as well as fuzzy USB stacks onto any target device you require. What I like about this as an SD card, we realized a long time ago that, especially devices like this, you're going to want to expand. So the micro SD card is a complete solution and you can expand the Flipper Zero's memory slot to a finite amount. Flipper Zero can work without the micro SD card, of course, so it's not included. You have to buy this separately. You can put any FAT32 formatted card in a store, all your needed assets without worrying it's going to run out of any memory. But bam so if we break down what's inside the hood, we have the MCU, which is the microcontrol unit. It's, it's kind of a, a module STMR32 module. It has an ARM Cortex M4, frequency of 80 megahertz, like I mentioned before. The flash is 1 MB and the SRAM is 128, more than enough for that. The RFID side of things, frequency is 125 kilohertz. Modulation AM, PSK, and FSK, supported cards. We have the EM4X and the HI Prox and Indala. For display, like I mentioned, we have an LCD monochrome resolution of 128 by 64 pixels. Infrared range is between 800 and 900 nm. TX power 3 MW. The radio module I already mentioned, we have the chip for the TI-CC11, TX power of 12 decibels, frequency bands, 
ranges from 300 to 900 megahertz GPIOs, I mentioned that already. Size and weight is quite small, only 140 grams. Um, battery, we have the LPIO 2000 MHA, seven day approximate from a full charge. Buzzer, we have sound inputs and frequency. Uh, so it packs quite a punch for such a little device. I'm really happy with it. So in conclusion from the Ace, I would highly recommend this if you can afford it. It's quite hard to get hold of depending where you are in the world. You're looking at probably like three to four weeks shipping, especially if you're like me in the UK and you got real mail on strike. You're going to be waiting for quite some time on this. Since Flipper Zero is very resourceful, it's an intensive project. Not only will you get from a lot from the hardware side of things, you get a hell of a lot from the firmware. Um, so we've identified all kind of the milestones and features throughout this video, but there's so much more to grow. That's why I love about this. Um, like I said, it's kind of got that Tamagotchi vibe, so you're gonna just grow with you. For me, it's a definite 100% buy, especially a good asset if you're within the security pen testing industry or if you just got a niche in cybersecurity and itch in the back of the brain like I always have to tinker. So, highly recommended from the Ace. Flipper Zero if you want to give me a coupon for my loyal subscribers, I'd simply drop it down below if you're watching and stay safe in the cyberspace. Peace out.